Welcome everyone. I am very excited to bring a new game to the channel today called Autonauts. Now Autonauts is due for release on the Steam platform on October 17th, which is very close by as of the recording of this video. And I have to warn you, this game has a very addictive quality to it. This is a type of, the, of game where you're really looking to automate as much as possible. So we're going to be building robots and programming robots and really trying to build a colony on a brand new procedurally generated world. Our goal for today is just to get started. We want to show the basics. We want to take a look at how do we get started on our brand new procedurally generated planet and what are the things that we need to do to set up the automation to provide our colonists with what they're going to need to survive. If this is something you guys enjoy, then we'll continue with the Let's Play series into future videos. But for now, let's go ahead and before we jump into the gameplay, take a look at the settings. Now these are all the default settings for me, uh, other than full screen. I did turn on the full screen rather than window mode, but other than that, everything you see here, we have some very basic uh, options available through graphics. We've got uh, volume knobs here for the special effects. This would be things, the just in general in-game sounds such as animal sounds, the sounds of the wind, you get the idea. Now for recording purposes, I have turned the music completely off, but I certainly recommend using that when you're playing the game. So in addition to our volume uh, and graphics adjustments, we also have our key bindings. And here you can see a list of those. We'll probably need to come back and, and refer back to this list as time goes on. But for now, fairly basic controls, and we're ready to get started. Before we get started in our new procedurally generated game world, we need to choose some options on what type of planet we would uh, like to have, as well as what type of gameplay we want. So we have three options for the type of game. There is the colonize, which is your default. This is where you start at the very beginning with only a few blueprints that are available to you, and then you have to do further research and reach uh, different goals in order to unlock more. Then we move down to the free mode, which opens up all of the blueprints to you. And then finally, creative mode that allows you total freedom to do whatever you would like to do in your gameplay. We come down to the bottom of the screen. Here is the name of our planet, which we can change to anything that we want. And then we have our random generation with a seed. So this current seed, you can see here the resources by scrolling across them. So we've got the darker areas, those are rock. Then we've got soil. Now the soil, particularly in areas that look like this, are probably gonna be more foresty areas, which is exactly what we need. That's very good early on. Uh, so let's see, in the general area where it's gonna spawn us, looks like we've got some nice, let's see, there's clay over there, which we won't need at the very beginning. Uh, but let's go ahead and hit this random generation key and let's see what else we can get all right i see some stone deposits here fresh water which we won't immediately need lots of soil okay i like this area right here this is pretty nice so now let's move over to uh the final few options small planet we're going to leave that unchecked uh by default because we want the normal size world uh, random objects. I'm actually not exactly sure what that does. I haven't had enough experience in the game to run into any random objects just yet, but we're going to leave that on just in case we happen to find some. And then finally, the tutorial, which is unchecked right now. By default, it would be checked, but we're going to take care of what the tutorial would teach us here in our initial gameplay, so we're going to leave that uh, off. And then finally, on the right-hand side of the screen is our scan results that shows us all of the different deposits that are around us uh, and the amount of resources that are located there. Okay, so we have everything we need. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, we are ready to colonize. So we have just landed. We've got our beacon sitting here, our transmitter. And so now let's, first things first, let's move around our game world a little bit and, and see what is available. Because right now, we only are able to see what is in our immediate area on this particular tile. And we notice that we've got some stone laying on the ground as well as some sticks. That will be very handy uh, early on because we'll need to make tools 
out of those. So I'm simply going to left click around the game world to move around. There we go. So a lot of forest in the general area. Let's keep moving around. And within the forest, you can see there are sticks and logs and different things that are around. Let's move over to the right a little bit. Okay, some more stone over here, which won't be immediately useful to us because we simply won't have the technology to do anything with it. Lots of berry bushes. And then we're going to get over near the water. All right, so you can see this water is shallow, so we can walk through this. And there's a, a boulder there, stone deposits. Always nice to find those early game. So what I'm looking for as I sort of scroll around, and I don't see any stone deposits in the immediate area, but as I look up here, I do find some. So that is exactly what we want to do. We want to, we want to have some stone deposits nearby because we're going to need a lot of stone early game. All right, there we go. Just to sort of square this off a little bit, we'll unlock this final area. So we've got some berry bushes. We've got clay here. We've got flowers, more bushes, stone deposits. We've got grass here. Lots of resources in the immediate area, as well as fresh water, which will be useful a little bit later on. All right, first things first, let's come back over and let's start laying out where we want some of our initial workshops to be. And in order to get those started, we'll come down to the bottom left-hand corner. Now, we can use the E key for this as well, but I'm going to spend most of my time actually clicking on the icons on the screen so you guys can see exactly what's going on. And when I don't do that, I'll try my best to uh, let you know which keys I am pressing. So we're going to open up the Blueprint screen. We have three different tabs. Here on the workshop area, we've got a workbench as well as a bot assembly unit. Now this bot assembly unit is something we're gonna to wanna to get started in very quickly because that's gonna give us the ability to create robots that we can automate doing various things such as chopping down trees or replanting trees and so on. Okay, for now, let's go ahead. I'll tell you what, let's move over to the second tab real quick. This is our storage. We've got crates as well as pallets so we can store our resources while they are uh, not needed. And then finally, we come to our colonist tab. And this is where we're going to have seeds, uh, an incubator, and then a research station. But we're a little ways away from getting to that. In fact, you can see in the bottom right hand corner, as I mouse over these, uh, they need crude gears, which we have not unlocked just yet. So we're going to have to wait a little bit on that. We're going to come back over to our tools, our workshops, and we're going to create uh, a few workshops. Let's see, where do we want to put these? Let's see, we've got stone here. Uh, we've got forest areas all through here, so that's going to be really nice. So let's just start out with... Let's start out with three of these. And we're going to drop three of these down. Now, why three of these? Because as we move forward in the gameplay, one of the things we're going to want to automate is creating tools because our robots are going to need tools in order to chop down trees and dig and, and so on. So we're going to need to automate that. And right now, we have three tools unlocked that we'll see in a moment. So this is going to become very handy. Now we're going to come into this area and let's actually rotate this around with the R key. And the reason I did that is because you notice on the right hand side now uh, is the input. This is where we're going to stand whenever we're creating things and dropping off resources. And on now the left side is where the output will come out, whatever it is that we're making, in this case, the bots. And since I figure that our robots are probably going to be coming in right to left, I wanted to put the input over on this side as they're dropping things off from time to time. All right, let's see. Uh, what else do we need? Let's go ahead and put down... Let's rotate this one back around. And let's see, we want to put it in pretty close proximity here. So we'll go ahead and drop one of those there. And then some crates, we'll drop these right over here. 
There we go. Now, the location where we put these is not terribly important right now. We can move these around anywhere. And also, you notice that these are only blueprints that we've laid down. We have not actually created anything yet. We're going to have to now gather some resources in order to begin that process. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start out with a workbench. We're going to need, in the bottom right hand corner, it shows us two logs and two sticks. So let's find some logs. Here are the logs along the ground. So we're going to pick that up. Now with the logs, we can only handle one of these at a time. Others will be able to handle two or four things at a time, such as the sticks. All right, so we need two logs. So let's go ahead and grab another log. All right, then next we need to pick up a couple of sticks. So we're actually going to run around and pick up a few sticks here from the very beginning. And that's all I see in the immediate area anyway. Uh, so let's go ahead and drop one, two, and that will allow us to go ahead and make our very first workbench. Now for right now, we don't need this stick, so I'll just simply drop it on the ground uh, somewhere nearby. So what do we need to do at a workbench? Well, we're going to click on it and we have three options. This is why I put down three workbenches so that we can automate production of each of these three. We have a crude ax, a crude spade or shovel, and then a crude pick. So pretty self-explanatory what those different items are going to do. We're going to use the ax on the trees. We're going to use the pick on the rock and we're going to use the spade on the soil. All right, so what do we need to make this? So we're going to make the ax, and it tells us that we need one stone and one stick. So we'll drop the stick in there, then we'll run and grab our stone. And our guy's busy making it, and there it is. There's our ax. So we'll run over and pick that up. Now, now that we have something in our hands, now we've been carrying things back and forth, the logs and the sticks and so on, but we have a backpack as well. Right now it only has one slot and you can see we've got room for upgrade slots here later on uh, as we uh, improve our technology. But right now we have the ax here in our hand, but we want to move it over to our backpack. So I'm going to press the Q key and that's going to move it. Now we have our hands available to carry things. Then I swap back over with the Q button again, and we can now come over and chop the tree. Notice the difference in the outline over the different objects. So I read that outline when I mouse over the grass, and that's because our ax is not useful on the grass. It is not the proper tool for this, but if I come over to the tree, we have a white outline, so that means that we have the proper tool for the job. So what we're going to do is we now need to come over, we need to get some resources available for our first bot assembly unit. And for that, we're going to need two logs and three planks. And the way we're going to get planks is from logs. We're going to use our tool and create planks from the logs. Uh, so let's go ahead and chop down a few trees. All right, there we go. There's a log. And now I can click on the log again with our tool. Once again, the white outline. And now we have a few planks. So these are the processes that we're going to want to automate from the very beginning as quickly as we can. All right, so now we have four planks. So that's going to get us enough planks. Now we need some more logs, which I already see plenty of logs around here. So let's go ahead and pick up the logs and deliver those. So one of the first things we're going to want to do uh, when, as we start producing bots is to automate this forestry process, the process of cutting down trees, replanting trees, and, and then cutting them down all over again. So we create a nice cycle for ourselves that is sustainable over the course of the gameplay. So now we're going to pick up all four of these planks, and we're going to need three of them here, one, two, and three. Now we can make our first bot unit. There we go. Bot assembly unit number one is up and running. Now we don't need this plank right now, or do we? In order to create a basic bot, now it shows us exactly what we're going to need. We need a log, three planks, a pole, 
and a tree seed. So let's just go ahead and drop our plank off right there. Now we'll come down and get our log. All right, so what else do we need? We need two more planks and poles. All right, so let's go ahead and chop down this tree while we're in the area. There we go. Now we're going to turn this into some planks, and then we're going to do the same thing with this tree as well. The deeper you get into this game, the more fun it becomes because the more you learn and the more you're able to unlock new technologies, which will make the gameplay even better. So there's two and there's three. So now we're just going to drop off these other planks right here. Now what do we need? Well, we need a pole. Well, in order to create that pole, we're going to come back over to our plank and we're going to use it to create a couple of poles put our tool away again, drop this pole off. Now all we need is a tree seed, which are these acorns that are laying on the ground, and we're done. Let's zoom in, and here we have it, our very first robot. We're gonna left click on him to charge him up. So now we're ready to start automating. And the way this works is uh, these bots will actually have code that is written for them. At the very beginning, they have very limited area for code uh, in their memory. However, the way they learn is pretty nice because they learn by watching you do something and then they simply repeat that task. So we're going to try to get his attention. Uh, I tell you what, before we do that, let's one other thing that I want to do. Remember we talked about having three of these and it's to automate the individual tools that are being created. Well, we want to go ahead and create another tool. Right now, this particular workbench is making axes. So we're going to create another axe. All right, there we go. Now we need a stick. And let's see, there's a stick nearby. Let's run over and grab that. All right, but we're going to leave this axe right there in this slot. And that's gonna be important here in just a few moments. Now we need to swap back to our tool. So I press the Q key. All right, so now what do we want our bot to do? Well, this particular bot, we want him to chop treats. So let's go ahead and whistle, which is the space bar. And you can see any bots will light up in yellow. We're gonna click on the one we want. And now we're ready to do some recording. Here is the area where the code is going to be written, but we're not going to have to actually write the code. This bot is going to learn by following us around and repeating the very same tasks that we do. And so let's go ahead and get started on that. So let's go ahead and have him chop down this tree. But first things first, we need to teach or record. So you notice he's going to come to us. He's going to now follow us around. So now we're going to left click with our tool on this tree. And you notice on the left hand side of the screen, just that action gave us three items. First thing he's going to do is find the nearest tree and we can specify where he, where he does that. Then he's going to move to that tree and then he's going to use the held item, which in this case is an ax to chop down the tree. What do we want him to do after this? Well, we want him to keep doing that and just move around and do that forever as long as there are trees available. All right, so in order to make him do that, we're gonna need a loop function, which is in the bottom left-hand corner of this tab. So we're gonna put a loop around these three items. So how long do we want it to repeat? Well, we can go forever and he will just do it until you know there are no more trees and then he'll simply wait for other trees to grow. Or we can have him do it until his hands are full which would be useful if he were, say, picking up something and delivering it, or until his hands are empty. This is what we're going to use in this particular case because until hands are empty, well, our tool, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, we're already about halfway through the lifespan of this particular tool, so he's going to need more tools over and over. And once that tool breaks, then he'll have empty hands, and that will trigger him to do the next thing on the list, which we're now going to set up by telling him 
uh, we're going to get rid of the tool in our hands and we're going to have him come over to this station and we're going to have him pick up that crude axe. All right, so now that's all that we want to give him to do. Uh, as I mentioned before, the bots that you have early on have very little memory. You can see we've got 5K left in memory, but we want to keep things simple. One bot, one task as much as possible, particularly at the beginning of the game. All right, so now what I need to do is use another repeat function so that he will continually go through this process of chopping down trees. And then whenever he breaks his ax, he will go find another ax and then go back to chopping trees. So now we're going to put that other repeat in there and we're going to have him do this one forever. So there we go. Now we're going to actually press the play button and he is going to do that. So he needs to find an ax. The reason why he needs to find an ax is because he doesn't have one. And that's the way we've told him to do it. So what we're going to do is actually give him uh, our ax that we just picked up in setting that. Uh, so let's go ahead and, oh, we need to pick him up. Yeah, that's not going to work just yet because I can't select him. Let's see, maybe we can try it this way. Well, we need to get to him because I need him to move. Uh, and right now he is simply waiting for one to be made there. So I'll tell you what we're going to have to do just to get through this process. There we go. We had to put it down and then move out of his way. So uh, as you can tell, there are still some bugs I'm trying to work out in, in this game. As most of this is still very new to me. But you notice that he's already gotten started. So I'm actually going to click on him and we're going to stop him for just a moment. And the reason we're going to stop him is because we need to define this area. Oops, there we go. Let's click record and then find the nearest tree. Now you can see by default, he's only going to look in a very, very small area. So where do we want him to look? Well, I think we'll make his territory right over here at the very beginning. I think that should cover pretty good. And then we'll have other bots that will cut in other areas. So there's our maximum area. So we'll click there. Now find the nearest crude axe. Well, we want him to always come back to this same spot. So there we go. Now he can get back to work. He's got his new area. All right, so we'll let him do that. And the good thing is, if your bots ever stop working and you can't figure out why, open up their code and it'll show you which uh, step that they're on. And if they're not working, it may be that simply they're stuck, like they don't have any tools available or they've run low on energy. You notice they have a green uh, button that is lighting up on their head. That's because they have a certain amount of energy. As long as that's green, you're good. But if it turns red, then you're going to need to come over, left click on them, and recharge them. All right, so now that we've got that part uh, done, what we want to do now is we want to get this second workbench up and going. So we're going to need some more logs and sticks. Uh, but first things first, we need to set our rock down. Now let's come over and grab this log. So we're going to need two of each. So let's go ahead and just grab some of these logs that are around. And you can see our bot is down here happily doing exactly what we told him to do. And he'll do it within that radius, within that area that we gave him. All right, so now we need a couple of sticks. And actually, I believe there are two sitting right here. There we go. So we'll drop these off. Now, at some point soon, I'm expecting him uh, to break that axe, and then he'll be sitting there waiting for me to provide another axe because there won't be one here. All right, so we're going to click here. And this one we're going to use to make the spade. Same ingredients, one stone and one stick. So we're going to go ahead and grab this stone that is sitting nearby. Now we're going to grab this stick. All right, there we go. 
All right, that'll take care of that. Let's actually make another one uh, here for a moment. We're going to drop our spade momentarily and make another one so that we can then train our next bot with one sitting in uh, the output area. So we'll let him go ahead and make that. And there we go. We have another spade. So now I can actually come back over and pick up this spade. All right. I am going to... For some reason, it does not want to let me swap tools if I have two tools. Okay. No big deal. We'll simply put one down and we'll come back to it. All right. So what do we need for another bot? Well, we need a log, three planks, a pole, and another tree seed. All right, so let's go ahead and pick up that log. We'll do that first. All right, let's see. Our guy has stopped, and this time he stopped, not because he ran out of his tool uh, and broke his ax, but because there's no more trees there. So he's going to have to sit there for a little while and wait for us to catch up to him. So let's go ahead and use what we have in storage here. we got one plank and one pole. Uh, and we'll go ahead and grab the tree seed, the acorn, while we're over here. Now we just need a couple more planks. So I'm going to swap back over to our tool. And we'll very quickly have a couple more of these. So we'll pick up both of these and drop them right in here. And now we've got ourselves another bot. Okay, let's left click on him to charge him up. All right, he's ready to go. Now, you notice it's yellow right now because he doesn't have any instructions. He doesn't know what that we want him to do. All right, so first things first, we are going to come over and pick up the spade because what we want this guy to do is dig holes so that we can replant. All right, so now that we've got our spade, we're going to whistle, which is the space bar, and we're going to click on uh, Mark II, our second bot. Again, we can change these names if we want to. In fact, right now we're going to put him as uh, he is going to be he's going to be hole digger. Nice and simple. And then we're going to press record. Now you notice he comes right over to us. And let's just start, I guess, right here in this corner will be good enough. So we're going to left click on the soil. Notice that we're doing this on soil. Uh, the darker instead of the greener area. All right, so we've dug the hole. You can see that we've done that. All right, we want to put a loop around that. And we're going to repeat that until his hands are empty. And let's see, we want him to find in the max area. And then I'm going to simply click and drag this area to where we want it, which I believe this overlaps with where our first guy is working, or at least pretty close to it anyway. We can always adjust these later. Nothing is set in stone. All right, so now he's going to do that until his hands are empty. In other words, until he breaks his shovel. Then whenever he does that, we're going to want him to come over and pick up the spade that is now there. Okay, we don't need to adjust where he's going to look for there. We always want him to come to this same spot. And then finally, we need to put a loop function around that. And we do want him to do this forever. So that should take care of it. All right, there we go. We move out of the way, let him come over and pick up his shovel. And now he should come right over and get to work digging holes. Now these holes is where we're going to put the tree seeds, but we're going to need another bot for that. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin. Okay, let's pick up this log. So now we need another one. All right, so we need three more planks. So let's go ahead and swap back, and we'll take this log and make some planks out of it. And then we'll come over and do the same to this log. All right, there we go. Put our tool away. Pick up both of the planks. There we go. We're going to drop three of them in here. And again, in the future, we're going to have some, some more storage out there. We're going to complete these storages so we'll have places to put the planks. But for right now, we don't really have that much of a need to store a lot of them. All right, now we need a pole. And we'll just go ahead and use our tool 
on the remaining plank and create our poles. All right, now we just need a tree seed, which we have one right nearby. And lo and behold, we are all set. So in the meantime, you notice here at the very beginning, as we're getting things set up, uh, our tree chopper has nothing to do right now because there's no more trees. But as we set up this loop, there will constantly be holes dug and new trees planted that will then grow and can be chopped down. So we'll create a wonderful cycle. All right, so now that we've charged up our third robot, we're going to press space bar to whistle. Then we're going to click on our third bot, which we are going to call the tree planter. Okay, now we don't need any tools in our hand for his job. So we're simply going to press the record key and we're going to have him find a tree seed or an acorn. Then he's going to pick it up and then he's simply going to take it over and put it in one of the holes. So we're going to right click on the hole. All right, there we go. So that's all we need him to do. So let's go ahead and do a repeat function on that and find the seeds. Uh, let's go ahead and do max area. And that's actually pretty close that we want to use. In fact, that might actually be exactly where we want. No, we want to go up one more. Yeah, there we go. All right, find the nearest hole. And we're just going to make these overlap. Don't necessarily have to overlap. For example, if you had another bot that was uh, activated and his job was to pick up all the acorns and deliver them to uh, one of our storage buildings, then we could simply have our worker come to the storage, get an acorn and drop it in the hole. All right, so we should be all set and he'll just repeat this forever. So let's go ahead and let him get started. He knows his area to work. Now he's going to go to the nearest seed. He's going to grab that and he'll go to a hole and simply plant it. There we go. He goes to the nearest hole and now he's all set. So we have one tree planted. Now he's got his second acorn. And that brings us to the completion of our first objective, which is forestry. So we've chopped down three trees. Yep, we've definitely done that. We've had that done for quite a while. Uh, soil digging, three of three, yep. And we've also planted some tree seeds. That's the final thing we were waiting on. So we'll go ahead and complete that. Now our transmitter gets a little bit bigger and we receive our first certificate. So now that is going to unlock a new piece of technology, which is the chopping block. And the chopping block we'll use in future videos and it will be useful for creating planks and poles by using logs. So it will get rid of the step of needing to have tools to do that process so that we can further automate that. All right, so we'll go ahead and press enter there. Now here's a new set of plans that we'll want to complete in all the different areas. We can upgrade our robots, upgrade our tools, continue on with forestry. There's a lot still to be done there. And then, of course, mining, lumber. We've got all sorts of stuff that we can do. So let's go ahead and click through there. And we're going to pin one of these. Um, I would like to do mining, but let's see. Actually, yes, we can go ahead and do the mining one. That'll be the next, uh, the next area that we'll want to automate. So we'll go ahead and have that. Uh, we've also got plenty of blueprints that are available here. You see, like we're getting into food, clothing and so on. Lots of things to unlock that will allow us to really be much more efficient than what we are right now. So we'll go ahead and escape out of that. And you notice our new bot is really busy planting new trees. And as these grow over time, then our tree chopper will have something to do. But as we get ready to close out our video for today, Notice that we have blinking red lights over one of our bots. And that is because he has simply, he didn't run out of tool. He ran out of energy. So we're going to come over left click on him. And that will re-energize him. And he'll be up 
and going. So what have we gotten accomplished in today's video? Well, quite a lot. Actually, we have our very first forestry area that is fully automated. All it requires us to do at this point is keep tools out here for these guys. Uh, we need to make sure we keep axes as well as spades out here and we're all set. So as we end today's video, I'm actually going to uh, create a new axe so it will already be there for whenever our tree chopper needs it. All right, there we go. One tool is waiting there for each of them. So that's going to do it for today. Thank you very much for joining me and stay tuned for more Autonauts.